So with the window in, it's now time to work on the door. So I need to trim back the membrane and get it stapled around the frame. So now any excess can get trimmed off. This bit at the bottom doesn't need to be here, but it was easier to frame the walls with it in place. But luckily I remembered to put no screws in. Well, not that it really matter. I could take them out again. So now I can just run the saw down the side and get this cut out. Now I need to build a frame to go in here. So I can get it measured, go in the workshop and get four bits of wood cut. Now get a couple of screws into each corner to get this all locked together. Right, just have a little check, make sure my measurements are correct, which is definitely not always true. Okay, that's going to fit fine, but before I install it, I'm going to get some paint on it. So I'm going to use the same barn paint that I've used already on the windows. The paint's dried on this side now, so I can get it put into place. Then I'm gonna drive some screws through from the inside to lock it in. Now, like I did with the windows, I can go around and get flashing tape installed around the door just to seal it all up. With the tape all the way around, I can use the heat gun again to get it nicely secured. Now it's all in place, I'm just gonna go around and finish painting this. I've been really keen to get a door made for this and then it's nice and secure. So I'm just gonna measure it out and then I've got some four by twos that I'm gonna get cut down in the tent on the mitre saw for this. These bits of 4x2 have rounded off corners, so I'm just going to run them all through the table saw and rip off an edge on both sides. I'm actually going to get it put together in the new workshop because I've got a nice big flat bit of floor to do it on. So this is gonna to go together pretty simply. I'm just gonna get some screws started, apply some glue and get this put together. There, it seems to all fit, so that's pretty good. Now I want to skin the door with some plywood. I don't want to just screw it onto the front because then the edges will be exposed. So I'm going to cut a little recess for the ply to go in. And what I've got is a bearing guided router bit.
Now, before I add the plywood to this, I'm going to add two more bits of wood to this frame. One bit along the side, and that'll give some extra material for the mortise lock to go into, and another bit in the center. Now, I've cut these so they go flush with the rebate I've just routed. First, I can get these two bits of wood glued and screwed together. Then I can get them put in the frame and screwed in place. Now I can work out how big this bit of plywood needs to be, get it taken out to the tent workshop and cut it to size using the track saw. Now, to get this ply to fit, you've got the age-old dilemma of do you square off the corners in the frame or round off the corners of the ply? I've moulded it over and I'm going to round off the corners. So I've just got a washer, I'm going to draw the radius on and then sand back to it. I don't want to glue this in, but what I am going to do is run a series of screws around the outside, locking it into place. Right, it's on, but all these screw holes are a bit ugly. So what I'm gonna do is go with the vertical stripes theme of the cladding outside and cut some strips. I've got some more four by twos, so I'm just gonna rip some down back in the tent. Now I need to work out how long these strips need to be to go on the door and get them cut down with a pull saw. Right, now I get some glue, attach the back of these strips and get them put in place with a few little pins. Now, before I go any further with finishing this door, I'm going to fit a lock. So I've got a mortise lock, a five lever one, and I'm just going to get that marked out where it needs to go. Now, to learn how to fit this, well, it comes with instructions. I watched a proper DIY video, so I'll leave a link to that down below. I need a 16 mil drill bit for this lock, so I can just work out how deep the hole needs to be, and I'm just going to mark it with a Sharpie. Just going to clamp a bit of wood on so I can use that as a reference to keep the drill level. Now I can start drilling a series of holes. If I have it on the right setting. Try to do it with the gloves on. Now I need to use the chisels to square this all up. So the mortise is all cut, so now I can get the lock put into place, the face plate on and draw around it. I'm gonna use a knife just to cut along the pencil line I've drawn. Now to remove most of the waste, I've got a little straight cutter that I'm putting in the router and I'm going to use that.
Right, so that's all mortised out. Now I need to get the lock lined up on the side and mark out with an awl the position for the keyhole. I put in two marks at the top and the bottom. Now I can drill down on those two marks I've made. Now I've got these two circles drilled, I need to join them up by chiselling out all the waste. So, I'm going to have a little test to make sure it all works. With the lock done, I'm now moving on to the hinges. So I've bought a set of stainless steel hinges. I'll put a link to these down below. So I'm gonna make a jig to help cut the mortises. And what I've done for this is watch another video, and this time Bradshaw Joinery. I'll put a link to it down below. So what I've done is gone and cut some strips of MDF to the thickness of the hinges. Now I'm gonna get three bits glued together around the hinge, which should make a perfect jig to cut the mortises. So it needs a fence piece, so while I wait for it to dry, I can get that done. So I've just got another bit of MDF, I'm just going to mark out where the opening needs to go. And this is only a rough bit, so I'm just going to jigsaw a little bit out. The fence can now get glued and clamped onto the front of the jig. So to get these mortises cut, I'm using a router with a bearing guided bit. So I've got the router cutter set so it protrudes past the thickness of the wood and just to the thickness of the hinge. I've marked out the positions where I want the hinges to go so I can get the jig lined up with my marks and clamped into place. That's three mortises cut. Now I can just use a chisel to square up the corners. So now I need to transfer those mortises to the frame. So I can get the door put in place, and then I'm gonna use a knife just to mark out where they need to go. Now I can get the jig clamped onto the frame and do the next three mortises. Now, when I was putting all these strips of wood around the door, what I didn't plan was for the keyhole plate and now it won't fit into place. But what I have is a force a bit, the correct size. So what I'm gonna do is clamp a bit of wood over the keyhole, and then I can drill down through it, hopefully creating a little recess for this to go. So I think that's gonna work okay, and we'll just pretend the cutout is a feature. I've given the whole of the door a sand down. Now I'm going to give it a couple of coats of the black barn paint that I've used everywhere else on this build. Paint's all dry, now I can install the hinges. So first of all, I'm going to drill out the holes using a self-centering bit. Then I can get the hinges screwed into place. So I've got the door up on blocks, hinges lined up. Now I can drill the pilot holes again and get some screws in. Now the door's hung, I can get the lock 
plate put into place and screwed in. Now I can transfer the marks of where the lock goes onto the frame and now it's really the same process again of drilling it out and chiseling. Right, with this in place, I'm just going to draw around it and then like I did with the lock, I'm going to use the router to remove most of the waste. Right, let's see if this fits into place. Ah, oh, perfect. So, just four screws and then we're done. Got a door that locks. With the door hung, I now want to insulate it. Now, I want to create a vapor barrier so that no air can condense on the outside of it. And what I have is some of this underlay for a floor that are left over from another project. So I'm going to get some pieces cut to size. To get these held in place, I've got some spray adhesive that I'm going to put on the back of these panels and onto the inside of the door. Both these surfaces have had a minute to dry. Now, they can be pushed together. So any gaps now, I wanna get taped up with some of this foil tape. Now I've got it all sealed up. I want to fill the rest of the gap with some acoustic insulation. Now, this is the same stuff I'm going to use in the walls, so you'll see lots more about this next time. So, I've cut a bit of MDF and I've got it painted. I've not shown all this, because this is kind of all oh, a bit of a sneak peek at what's happening in next episode, because you're seeing really how exactly I'm gonna finish the inside of the workshop as well. So this now just gets screwed into place. So now I'm just gonna add a few finishing touches to the door. I've got the brass keyhole plate that I can get put on, and I've got a D handle to get attached. Now, this project you might have noticed I've been doing over quite a few weeks. I started before the cladding even went on, and now I'm finishing it off, and actually the inside of the hut is done. So next week, you'll see more on the interior. So, thanks for watching. Thanks to my patrons, and please subscribe for more videos.